Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. God's been dealing with me about the pressure of finances. And if you think money doesn't have spiritual ties, you haven't read the book, the Bible, because it is a very spiritual aspect of our lives. And anything that we spend 40 plus hours a week concentrating on, God is going to have something to say about it. It's going to be important to him, and he's going to want us to think right about it. So I titled today's message, God's Simple Method of Success. I I was talking to somebody last week, and they were asking, you know, needing prayer on finances, and all that kept coming to me to tell them was, this is simple. It it, it feels complicated right now, but this is real simple. He has a real simple answer. And so his method is very simple simple and we're going to look at it today so go with me to Joshua 1 7 if you've been around here very long uh, you know this is one of the scriptures uh, Joshua 1 8 is one of the scriptures this place was founded on I would have to say probably my dad's favorite passage and uh, when he started this church many years ago so most of you can quote at least verse 8 without even looking at your Bibles Joshua is the is the younger man being brought up under Moses who is going to fill Moses' shoes and lead the children of Israel into the promised land. And Moses has, has made a mistake in the top and shadow, and I don't want to get into all that, but Moses is not going to go in, and Joshua is going to rise up and lead this people. Now, Joshua has right to be scared. He's watched Moses lead this nation we're not talking about a small group here we're talking about a nation of what the scripture calls stiff-necked people they must have been redheads i don't know (laughs) this sister-in-law joke over here they were stiff-necked the scripture calls them that the old testament calls them that the book of acts calls them that that they were stiff-necked they were stubborn they were rebellious they tried they offered to kill moses many many times And Joshua's going to take his place. Now, I don't know about you, Lynn, but that's not really a job I'd want after watching. He's watched all of this for 40 years. He's watched all of this, and now God says, you're going to be the one that takes the people in. He's in a tough spot. So God's constantly telling him, be strong and courageous. Be be strong, be courageous. So verse 7, Joshua 1. Only, I love that, only be thou strong and very courageous he's preparing him that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left don't you get distracted that's what he's saying that's a big lesson in today what we're talking about on finances and God's God's way to success do not get distracted from the word the word is your source God's word is your source Don't get distracted. Why? That you may prosper wherever you go. Here's the the one we all know. Just say it with me. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. If you'll learn this one scripture, and I don't mean memorize it, I mean meditate on it, think about it, operate off of it, you will be a success. <coughs> Sounds too simple, because the simple part's not in hearing it. The, sim- the, the complicated's not in hearing it. The complicated part is in applying it. When things are happening on the left and on the right to distract us, We've got to stick with what the Word says and the way He says to do it. I love that Word. He he says you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. Now, success is more than money. And if you don't know that, you haven't looked at some really miserable rich people or really miserable poor people. Miserable people are not successful people. 
And so success is more than money. Biblically, success is defined as dealing wisely in life. That's what success is. Biblically, if you study it out biblically, success is dealing wisely in life. And I love that the Amplified Version brings that out. The Amplified, I think I put it in your notes, said, for then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. My relatives, uh, God love them, they all worked hard, but more than working hard, they were so wise in what they did with what they made. It's one one of the greatest, other than I hate to separate it from the godly heritage because that is the godly heritage. It all came from the wisdom of God. One of the greatest things that that I inherited was their thinking, Lynn, on money, their wisdom with money. They used to say this, it's not just what you make, it's what you do with what you make. It's It's not what you make, it's what you do with what you make. You know, I've got, I've got a, uh, my great-uncle, my great-uncle Henry. Anybody have Henry Underhill in school? You have to be uh, older than me. i just put it that way. Some of y'all had Uncle Henry? Oh, that's great. He was president of the school board in Russellville for years. Uh, great teacher. Uh, had, I don't even know how many degrees. I have all of his degree stuff at my house. But he was a teacher, lived off his teacher's salary. And any teachers probably know back then, especially, uh, you didn't, you and your wife didn't live off a teacher's salary. He left an inheritance. I'm going to say for his children's children. We were the closest things the children he had. Right, Lynn? You too. You went to college off of their money. Ha! A whole nother generation later. What a testimony of what we're saying here today. That's success. Isn't that beautiful? I forgot about that. A whole other generation below me, still prospering. Now it'll go to June. Still prospering because of principles, operating in the principles of God. That is success off a teacher's salary. That's beautiful. It's not what you make. It's what you do with what you make. It's what you do with what you make. That's wisdom. Now, verse 9 of Joshua 1. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Keep fear out. Gotta keep, if you're gonna be a success, you gotta keep fear out. Do not be discouraged. Now I'm telling you, I highlighted that word in my notes. I don't know if I did in your or not, in yours or not. Don't get discouraged. If you're gonna be a success, you gotta keep fear out and you gotta keep discouragement out. They don't attract what you want. Fear is a magnet just like faith is. Faith will draw the things you desire, and fear will draw the things you're afraid of. So you've got to get rid of that fear. Keep it in the principles of God, and that won't be there. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get ready of that get ready get ready for what we've wandered in the wilderness for 40 years get ready for what get ready to go into what I promised you is yours get ready I love that part of being a leader is to tell you to get ready we're we're not we're not circling this mountain anymore it's time to move into the things that God has for us get ready now oh I'm try not to get sidetracked Three days from now, which you know, type and shadow, that's always three days, Jesus in the heart of the earth paying for our salvation. This is him making a way. This is type and shadow of that. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan and go in and take possession of the land your God is giving you for your own. Everything we have need of is supplied in Christ Jesus. Everything. Our salvation is complete. Now, how does, ha, Mama, how does that happy birthday, by the way, belated birthday, how does that everything we have need of is supplied in Christ Jesus, how does that equate out to paying your bills? It's not about him raining money down from heaven. 
It's not about you finding money on the ground. It's about us operating in the ways of God that bring God kind of results. That people want God to rain something down. He did. It's called his word. And Isaiah is very plain about that. He sent his word down like rain from heaven so that it would produce what he sent it to produce in you. But we've got to operate in the word if that's going to work that way, if we're going to possess the thing that's, things that he's promised us. God's simple method of success, well, we just complicate it. We complicate things. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but I've made some things complicated that are real simple. Just do it God's way. Just do what you find there in the Word. Just do it. Do it and believe it's going to work. And I, I don't mean to oversimplify that, but it's just the truth. There are principles in here that will prosper you and, and will make you successful. Don't complicate it. Basically, I went through Joshua 1 and, and narrowed it down to this. Speak and think on his word. Speak and think on his word so that what comes out of you came from him. And when he gives you a desire, that desire's from him, he'll give you the steps to fulfill that desire. I look at this place and I see people who have made successful businesses out of a simple idea. Y'all are incredible. Y'all must be brilliant. Y'all must have been smarter than everybody else that was around you. No. Some of you I went to school with you. I know you're about on the same level as me. I, our lockers were close to each other. S's and U's, we were close. And here you are. How? Because you placed yourself under the word of God. And he put a desire in you. Bridget, an author of children's books. John and Korean, beekeepers. Who would have thought when we were out riding three-wheelers? Yes, they did used to have three wheels and not four. I mean, who would have thought? Look at the people around this room. Turkeys? You're going to raise turkeys? Buy a butterball, buy a butterball, buy a butterball. Did I do that good? <laughs> Coffee shops. Rock climbing walls. When God puts a desire in you, he has a way to make it succeed. And that way is found in his word. Don't complicate it. Don't get distracted. Then you'll prosper. And then when you prosper, deal wisely. Because success is not prospering. Success is prospering and dealing wisely. And those two have to be together. In fact, that's it. Godly prosperity plus wisdom, that's success. Godly prosperity plus wisdom, that's success. And the scripture's full of examples that prosperity gained any other way will go through your fingers. But godly prosperity, with wisdom applied to it, you're going to become a success. So don't get scared. Don't get discouraged. If he's leading you into something or leading you out of something, don't get scared. Trust. I'm going to say trust in the hand that feeds you. Don't lose your confidence. He kept saying that to me this morning. Don't lose your confidence. That wasn't for me. That was for somebody else. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your confidence. Your confidence is not in the job. Your confidence is not in the idea. Your confidence is in your source, which is God. So you've got to keep your confidence in the right place. And then no matter what it is who's, he sends you to or leads you to to do, and you know the wonderful thing about God, he finds a way for you to love what you do. Don't, don't hate what you do. Buddy up with God. He'll find a way for you to love your job. Either you'll find a purpose in your job where you are, or he'll lead you into something else. Bob and Charlotte designed our t-shirts for years. 
designed them, and we paid somebody else to print them. Now they're the owners of the print house. How'd that happen? Desire. It developed. It developed. They learned. They didn't need to just go open up a t-shirt place. They had to learn first. God started using them. Hobby. Oh, just a hobby. Oh, design us the Wade t-shirts. Okay, we'll design them. You know, I'd throw him a couple of bucks, you know, buy him burgers or something. And now it's a business. It's a business. Dad with his roping. You know, he grew up, he loved to rope. God asked him to lay down his rope so that David wouldn't walk into the rodeo world. Then he gave, gave Dad that back and it became a ministry. God loves you. He wants you to love what you do. He wants to put those desires on the inside of you. He wants, he wants you to be confident and successful. In fact, you will not be successful if you're not confident. And that confidence needs to be in him. And then the next thing in Joshua that I got is that get ready. Get ready. If you're not getting ready, you're not expecting anything. Get ready. That's faith. Joshua looked at him and said, get ready. We're going in. 40 years there has, there, there has to be a time that you get ready are you preparing to succeed or are you making provisions to fail are you preparing to succeed or are you making provisions to fail I think back and this has been uh, quite a few years ago since Chelsea and Wade were in gymnastics I think they were woo, it's been a while right sis 25 years ago or so not telling her age but 25 years ago or so and, and they'd have them on the balance beam. Anybody ever tried to walk on a balance beam? I mean, one that's up off the ground. You know what they'll tell you not to do? Don't look down. Why? Don't look for a place to land. Because if you look for a place to fall, you will hit it. If you look for a place to fail, you will hit it. You look at the end result. You look at the end of that thing. You don't, you don't look for a place. This is for somebody today. Quit, quit looking for a place to fail and where you're going to land if you fail. Because you will hit it. And God's saying, mm-mm. No, failure is, not in the, failure is not in his plan for you. Jeremiah's real plain. He has a plan for you. It's good. It's for a future and a hope. I don't, I don't hear failure anywhere in that. Don't look down. Go with me to Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to read quite a bit here, so just turn there if you will. But we're mainly going there for verse 1. The rest is just good, and I couldn't, couldn't walk away from it. I think sometimes we need to be reminded of the life that Jesus came to give us. And quit letting the world make you feel guilty that Christianity provides you a wonderful life. Stop letting the world make you feel guilty if you've succeeded like Christians aren't supposed to be successful in anything. I get so tired of that mentality. I mean, we don't want to be wasteful and we don't want to be stupid. But we're going to be successful. We're children of the king. We're children of the Most High God. We can't help but be confident because we are confident in Him, our provider. It's even His name, Jehovah Jireh. It's so much who He is in providing for us that they had to call Him that. They had to make it his, part of His name. That's who He is. And you'll never find the righteous forsaken or His seed out begging bread. That's in the, that's in the book. What are we going to do with that? That's just the truth, Tommy. If we walk in his ways, if we walk in his ways, we will succeed. It, it's that simple. Deuteronomy 28, 1 says, And it shall come to pass, if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Look, I believe in being humble. I believe in walking in humility. 
with every one of these blessings that comes, we know one thing, we're there because of God. And because we listened to his voice and obeyed his commandments, that's why we're there. But you can't, you can't X out. He will set you on high above all nations of the earth. You can't do that. Of course, he's speaking to the children of Israel here. But the blessing can't be denied. If you walk in God's ways, I mean, do you think God's successful? Like, what do you think his success rate is? I mean, if you were going to do a, a business analysis on this, what, I mean, how do you think he would come out? Well, if you're walking in his ways, don't you think yours should kind of be somewhere in the same margin? Why do we want to find, why, what makes us think it, that it's being humble to X ourselves out of what he's provided? That's stupid. That is a bunch of religious thinking. We don't like to think religious around here. We want to read the word for what it is. And he said, if you'll listen to me, I'll put you, I'll set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings will come on you and they will overtake you. That's strong wording right there. If you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of thy cattle. You going to have kids when they didn't think you could have kids? Can I get amen in the back? Miranda had Brendan. He's, he's not here today. He's staying at home with his daddy. But Brendan is on the planet. And uh, praise God, product of the word. Perfect. Entire wanting nothing. Hmm. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground. Anybody else in here that desires kids too, I'm telling you, it's coming. And the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Sheep, sheep, sheep. Where's my husband? It's in the word. It's in the word. Didn't read anything about alpacas in there, but I saw the sheep. Blessed shall thou be in thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when you come in. Blessed shall thou be when thou go out. The Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and they shall flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. That's your bank accounts. That's your investments. That's where you store the things that God has given you. And all that you set your hand to, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's what he's promised you. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. And he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they will be afraid of thee. And the Lord will make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto his fathers to give you. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, his good treasure. He's going to open unto you his good treasure. I wonder what's in that treasure. He's going to open unto you his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. And if you will hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command thee this day to observe to do them. It's just simple. It's just real simple. Listen and do it. Dig in there. Find what he's got to say and do it. Now, as beautiful as verses 2 through 13 are, they all hinge on verse 1. Everything hinges on verse 1. If you'll hearken and do. If you'll listen to what I'm telling you to do, and if you'll do it, then verses 2 through 13 come into play. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked at verses 14 through 68 or not, but they will really make you want to listen to God. They are appalling. They are the curses. You live in a cursed earth. Blessing doesn't happen naturally. Blessing happens supernaturally. And so we need something supernatural in our businesses. We need something supernatural in our businesses. And that's called the blessing of God. We want the blessing on it. Oh, we're not teaching on tithe this morning, but we will eventually get there because I am a believer. I started tithing when I was a little girl. And I have never, even being a single mom, I have never 
gone without provision. And I don't mean just enough to pay the bills. I, my kids have never gone without. It works. Oh, there's, there's some beautiful types and shadows uh, in the Old Testament that have to do with tithe. Whew. The taking of Jericho, the first city when they went in, when they went into the promised land, the first city they come to is Jericho. You know what God told them? Oh, man, do I want to go there? You know what God told them? Yes, I do. That was the answer. God told them, everything in this city is mine. The first city they took was their tithe. He got all the gold, the silver. Everything was consecrated to the Lord. Because they paid their tithe, Jericho was the gateway to the rest of the promised land. He has a way and it works. You can hate it. You can love it. I just choose to live in it. It's beautiful to me. Uh, absolutely. My life is a testimony to it. Uh, Rusty and I love to pay our tithe. You need the blessing. You need the blessing of God on your business. That's not fairy dust, folks. That's not something he sprinkles down from heaven. That's me listening and me doing. It has nothing to do with my actions, my intelligence, uh, my talents. It has everything to do with serving a God out of love and listening to what he says to do. I have out, I don't know if that's a word, I am way more successful than my abilities. Anybody else in here way more successful than your abilities? Man, thank goodness it did depend on intelligence. It has more to do with our heart. You don't have to turn there, but Isaiah 119 says, If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. What a promise. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient. Now, sometimes I think we say if we're obedient, <laughs> but I love that willing part. If you're willing and obedient, because remember what he called the people of the Old Testament, the children of Israel, stiff-necked? Because a lot of times they were obedient with rebellion. Like he had to... He had to be hard on them. They weren't very willing. Sometimes they were obedient, but they weren't very willing. He can't navigate the unwilling. He can't lead you if you're unwilling, if you're just obedient. Okay, God, I will do this. No, that's stiff-necked. We're willing and obedient. That's how we eat the good of the land. That's <laughs> stiff-necked why the children of Israel took 40 years to get on an 11-day journey. God has a place for you, and it's good. And if you've hit a wall in the area of success, then we need to meditate on that. Am I willing and obedient? Can God navigate me? Or am I so set on this is my job, this is my occupation, this is my education, this is my... That we're not willing to let God... Look, don't put God in a box when it comes to your success. Don't put him in a box. He can use your dreams to bring you success. Remember, we've said this, what, several weeks in a row. He's the God of your dreams. He's the God of your dreams. He puts desires on the inside of you when you're pliable in his hands. And then he doesn't just give you the desire and not fulfill it. If he brings you a dream, he'll fulfill it. Oh, he's beautiful. It, uh, serving him is the most amazing experience. And if you're doing it just out of obedience, you're missing something. You're missing the incredible part of God, the beautiful part of God. You're just seeing the powerful part of God. Oh, listen, the life he has for you, it's incredible. It, it's more than you could have ever thought life could have been, and it doesn't matter where you started, and it doesn't matter what, what waters you've walked through. Go with me to 1 Kings. I really feel like this, is, this portion is in particular for someone today because God, God added it to me at the last minute. So, willing and obedient. 
willing and obedient. Willing to be obedient. You want me to say it any other ways? Willing and obedient. We're going to do quite a bit of reading here. 1 Kings 17. I'm going to start in verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. He was a prophet, and that's what he was prophesying. And then I have highlighted in mine, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Came unto Elijah, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. So the prophet calls for no rain. Guess what? No rain? Guess what happens? Uh, drought and famine, you know? So he, the prophet calls for no rain as God's dealing with Ahab. So God tells the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Turn eastward, go over to the brook, camp out over there, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Don't, don't limit God. He sent birds to drop food off. I mean, y'all thought this whole new delivery of food thing system was new. It's nothing new. We should start one called the Ravens. That'd be a great, great church business. The Ravens. Oh, I might have to do that. <laughs> They're going to feed you there. And he went and did. And he went and did according to the word. He went and did according to the word. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is in Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. So God tells you to go to the brook, that's what's going to supply you, and then the brook dries up. Well, what do we do now? What do you do when the brook dries up? What do you do when, with, when what God was using to supply you dries up? Anybody ever been there in business when the brook dried up? Well, the brook was never the source. The brook was never the source. It was the natural avenue that God used. It was a natural avenue that God used used. Natural avenues can change, but your source never does. You're not limited to the avenues. You're only limited by God. That's it. You're only limited to what God promised you. That's it. So don't look at your job or, or your check or if you're on a limited income, if you're receiving a, um, you know, social security, don't don't look at that as your source. It's not your source. It's an avenue that the source God uses. He has many, many avenues. Don't limit him. If the brook dries up, don't get scared. Don't get discouraged. Listen to what the word of the Lord is saying. Get this in verse 8. So the brook dries up, and the word of the Lord came to him saying, the word of the Lord told him to go to the brook. The brook dried up. The word of the Lord came to him again. And this time he says, Arise, go to Zarephath and dwell there. I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. And he arose and went. Here we got the willingness and the obedience of the prophet. And any time a source, a, a resource of God dried up, God came to him and gave him another word. Don't freak out. Don't panic. Don't panic. The, the, source, the source is good. There's many, many avenues for God to supply what you need. And guess what? When he got there to the widow woman, he didn't live there forever, forever either. If you look at chapter 18, verse 1, you know what it starts off with? And the word of the Lord came to him saying, and Elijah went. It, it, it's just that simple. If you need to change something, if the brook's dried up, the word of the Lord will come to you saying. If you're listening, the word of the Lord will come to you saying. He'll come to you saying. He's going to come to you saying. You know, ask God for wisdom. I, th 
think sometimes we just get so caught up in our own understanding. The scripture's real plain about that. That's not real smart. To just stick with what we know and our own understanding that really limits God. It limits God to our intelligence. It limits God to our abilities. It limits God to, to the knowledge that we have and the way. It limits God to where he can only do what we see. He's so much more than that. He has so many other resources than that. So ask him for wisdom. I put James 1. I love James 1. Can't tell you how many times a week I depend on James 1. That I have to stop and remember. Oh wait, I have a promise for this. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That he would not withhold anything, nor would he get on to me for asking. Do you want to read it out of the non-Susan version? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. What? For the asking? No, for the asking and believing. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he will receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you've got to ask God for wisdom and believe that you're going to receive it. And you'll have it. The word of the Lord will come saying, Well, how? It might be just an idea. It might just be a thought. It might be something that somebody says to you. It might come in a dream. It can come. He's not limited in how it can come. But when he comes saying, Are you listening? You know, there's a scripture, in, in uh, I think I put it in your notes somewhere, um, in Proverbs 1, I believe is where it is. It says, wisdom cries out. Wisdom is crying out. In your situation right now, no matter what it is, wisdom's crying out. It's crying out. It says she cries out in the streets. She cries out. Wisdom is crying out. We just got to get on the right frequency to hear it. And, and one of the main things we do that is we ask God. We ask him for wisdom. And then place yourself in an atmosphere to hear. I know y'all hear me say that a lot. But placing yourself in an atmosphere to hear is crucial. And that can be prayer. That can be with wise counsel. That can be in your time reading the word. I don't know how it happens when you read the word and you're reading these and thous and thus saith the Lord. And all of a sudden something comes out of you that you can't read in the word all I know is if you sow the seed of wisdom that's found in that word it will bring a harvest of what you need in your life and and you can just be reading the word studying a story and then all of a sudden you know what to do you know what to do you know the answer so place yourself in that atmosphere of the word by all means church is a great place to be spoken to absolutely a great place not just from the pulpit Praise and worship. In praise and worship may not have anything to do with what anybody's singing up here, but it's the atmosphere that you just submitted yourself to. You just submitted yourself to the atmosphere of God. It's a great time for him to speak to you. A lot of times I get what God's trying to tell me during praise and worship. It has nothing to do with the songs. It has to do with the fact I took the time to submit my atmosphere to God, and then he can speak. You know, wise counsel, friends, the people you place yourself around. Look, don't be friends with stupid people. <laughs> Love stupid people. I'm all for it. Witness to stupid people. But you know, Scripture's pretty plain. You walk with a wise man, you become wise. You walk with a fool, you go in the ditch with him. That's what the Scripture says. So, you know, place yourself in an atmosphere. To <laughs> told y'all we weren't very religious. Love stupid people, just... That was a little Tom Underhill coming out in me there. I'm not even going to apologize. Ah, oh, I found Proverbs 2. Listen to this. We'll end with this. Proverbs 2. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding and if you'll call out for insight 
and cry aloud for understanding. And if you'll look for it as for silver and search for it as a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. That's sweet. Oh, that's sweet. God doesn't want you down here trying to figure it out and getting it all wrong. He has, he has a very simple answer. And I believe if he had me teach this today, it's because he has a very simple answer, and he wants you to have it. Place yourself in an atmosphere. And then when he speaks to you, don't let fear set in. Whatever it is he tells you to do, leads you to or leads you from, there will be a word of the Lord that will come saying, be willing to be obedient. No stiff necks. Be willing to be obedient. Amen? Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.